This is Andrew Reversa with Impact Soundworks, and today I'll be demonstrating our newest library, Rhapsody Orchestral Colors. This library is designed to help you create orchestral textures and phrases as quickly as possible. The way we've set it up, we have this incredible orchestration engine where just pressing a single key creates a fully voiced and orchestrated chord. Uh, we used some of this technology in our Brevera Scoring Brass library, and people liked it there, so this is really an expansion of the concept to the full orchestra. So for example, here I have the strings chords patch loaded. And you'll notice that rather than just sampling the strings all at once, we have them broken down into low, medium, and high with basses, celli, and then violins and viola recorded together as a section. So I'm gonna press just a single key. And you can hear by pressing C, we get this beautiful wide C chord with all three string ensembles. And if we play a C an octave up, we get an inversion and then an octave up from that. Another inversion. Now, of course, these are major chords. By playing in the upper octaves of the keyboard, we get minor chords. I'm changing the dynamics using the mod wheel, and then, of course, we also have expression control. So, for example, if we hold a G chord, uh, I can control the volume of that without changing the dynamics, and that's using CC11. Standard stuff. Anyway, so we have major chords and we have minor chords. We also have different articulations. For example, legato, staccatissimo, staccato, and tenuto. So for example, let's hear what these short notes sound like. And here again, I'm using the mod wheel to control dynamics. And we'll compare that to staccatos, which are longer, of course. and tenuto, which is longer still. And again, each note here is generating a full chord. So I'm just playing single notes at a time. You can also play legato chords. So to look at the interface before I show the rest of the orchestra, uh, we have a mixer with three mic positions. We have close, decatry, and then the outriggers, which are basically hall mics with a very wide perspective. Each section can be mixed separately, which is a, a real benefit of having these recorded individually. Also, we have this handy link control, which lets you mix all of them together. So for example, let's hear what it sounds like uh, with no close mic and no decatry. Or if we want to save RAM, we could disable these two mics altogether and just use the close mic. You're still hearing some reverb because we have a convolution reverb as well with some custom impulse responses. So if we turn that off, you'll hear this is just the close mic. And just like with Rhapsody Orchestral Percussion, this is a very neutral, tight, and focused sound. And then if we add Decatree back in, and then once again, the hall mics. So as you can hear, the default sound, even with the hall mics, uh, it's very dry and very neutral, although not as dry as if it were recorded in a uh, silent studio or silent stage, for example. So uh, we recommend using the built-in reverb or the reverb of your choice to mix with the rest of your orchestral samples. So you get that nice tail at the end. Back to the interface, uh, you can quickly mute each section using the M button. Then you can pan, of course. So right now we have some uh, default panning and uh, what we can do is return everything to the center. And there's an EQ as well, so if you want a brighter or duller sound, this is a handy tool for mixing. But in the event that you want to mix everything in your DAW, we have a drop-down menu which allows you to choose 
outputs. Here I have 16 outputs configured in contact. So let's say you have a nice tape saturation plugin and you just want to use it on the violins and violas. You can do that, send this to a different output, and there you go. Down here, this is uh, really the heart of the library, and this is the chord orchestration engine. Uh, right now, everything is set to wide voicing. Uh, and to best illustrate these voicings, I'm going to mute all but one section so you can hear the difference. So I'm going to play one note. This is with wide voicing. Now let's compare that to a low voicing. Or high or fat voicing, appropriately named. That's a very lovely sound. Then we have uh, octaves and quote unquote power chords. So uh, by doing this, we just get one note at a time. And then if I play in the upper register, we get Fifths. Moving on, uh, this type, the inst two, is uh, the third and fifth of a triad. So if I play a D, I'll get an F sharp and an A. And you get that no matter where you play. And then it's major if you play in those lower octaves, and in the upper octaves, it's minor. Although it sounds major because you're only hearing the third and the fifth and not the root note. The Aleatoric voicings, that's uh, one, two, and three, plays a random note from the instrument's range every time you hit a key. Or we could illustrate this better with a short note. So this can lead to uh, some pretty interesting sounds if you were to do this with multiple instruments. Each ensemble is playing a separate randomly selected note. Uh, if we go back to violins again, uh, there is a two and a three note version, so this will play two notes. And three will play three notes. Then there are individual scale degrees. So if we select one, that will play the root note only. If we select uh, five, for example, that'll play the fifth. So in context, what you could do is something like this. You could have the basses play one, you could have the cellos play, let's say five, and then the high strings play seven. Again, if you play in the lower octaves, you'll get a major seventh, and in the upper octaves, you'll get a minor seventh. And the same goes for a sixth interval if you have that as well. So by customizing the voicings like this, you can create uh, basically anything you want from a single key press, which is pretty cool. With the random mode enabled, the instrument will pick a different chord voicing every time you hit a note. So unlike the aleatoric chords, uh, where you get a different note each time you hit the key, uh, this will select an entirely different voicing. So I'm just going to hit G, for example. And we're hitting uh, all these different voicings with each note. And you can change that uh, by clicking on the settings icon next to random and select whichever you'd like. Then we have split mode. What this does is let you assign three separate voicings for three different octaves. So let's say we can have low voicing to start with, then high, and then just do the root note. Now if I play that low octave, we get the low voicing, then the second octave, the high voicing, and then finally just the root note. So that's the chord engine in a nutshell, and I'll show some more features in a minute. But first, I want to show some of the other instruments. Here's the brass section. We have tuba, trombones, horns, and trumpets. We can go to the woodwinds.
For these, we have bassoons and contrabassoons as one section, and then the high winds are oboe, flute, and clarinet. We have the men and the women as two separate choirs. There's soprano and alto for the women, and then tenor and bass for the men. We have two different vowels as well. Ah and O, oh, which can be switched between via key switch. And then just the same, we have tenudos, staccatos, staccatissimo. As a bonus, we've also included some choir effects. So we have all the different consonants. That's the men in the lower octaves, and in the upper octaves, we have the women. With the same mic mixing options as well. And we have a few effects too. But here's the cool thing about Rhapsody Orchestral Colors. Uh, we don't just have chords. You also have access to two octaves of unison notes for each ensemble. So for example, let's go back to woodwinds. This time, instead of the chords patch, we have the unison patch. And here we have the full range going from the low bassoons to the high woodwinds. So then with this, you can truly create whatever chords or parts you'd like. And you have the full range of articulations as well. And the same goes for the rest of the orchestra. So we have the low tubas, trombones, all the way up to trumpets. These aren't a replacement for a full dedicated orchestral library like Bravura Scoring Brass, but it is really nice to be able to create your own chords and then blend with the chord patches. We've also included the ability to create your own custom ensembles, either in this unison mode or in the chord mode. So here's the default custom ensemble. And let's try it out again with the staccatissimo articulation. And by using these dropdowns, you can select whatever combination you like. So we could do basses with trombones, and maybe a men's choir, and then the high woodwinds as well. Or legato. Or just plain old sustains. So that is Rhapsody Orchestral Colors. It's available for Contact version 5.3 and higher for $149. And we also have a cross-grade offer if you have either Rhapsody Orchestral Percussion or Percussion Essentials. And we think that the deal is really a no-brainer. So check your user account if you own either of those two libraries. As with all of our virtual instruments, we hope that this will inspire your music, give you ideas, enhance your tracks, and most importantly, we hope that you'll enjoy and have fun with it. Anyway, this is Andrew Aversa with Impact Soundworks, and since it is mid-December after all, I want to wish everybody a happy holidays and a happy new year. Thank you.